perfectly reasonable to ask yourself, why am I studying generating functions? It seems like such a weird thing to study, and we have yet to see a single use for generating functions. That's true. Until now, in this video, we'll discuss how to use generating functions to solve recurrence relations, and this will be a huge result in this course. Hey everyone, real quick, I just want to mention that this video is a part of a whole course that I made. You can find a link to this entire course in the description below and make sure to click on that subscribe button. All right, let's just jump right into this video with an example of solving a recurrence relation. Let's solve the recurrence relation a n equals 3 a n minus 1 minus 2 a n minus 2 with initial conditions a naught equals 1 and a 1 equals 3. We saw in an example from a previous video that this recurrence relation gives the sequence, let's see, it was 1, 3, 7, 15, 31, 63, and so on. Which, by the way, has a generating function we saw of... 1 over, I believe it was 1 minus 3x plus 2x squared. We did this by calling the generating function a and then computing a minus 3xa plus 2x squared a, which was just 1 we found, since every other term canceled out. But how does knowing the generating function help us? How do we know, why is it that knowing this generating function can help us solve the recurrence relation? Well, first, let's break up the generating function into two simpler ones. For this, we can use partial fraction decomposition. Let's start by factoring the denominator. Now I'm going to give myself a little bit of room here. Let's see, this is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus x times 1 minus 2x. Okay, partial fraction decomposition tells us that we can write this fraction as the sum of two fractions we decompose the given fraction here. So we can actually write this as some a divided by one over x plus some b divided by one minus two x. For some constants a and b. To find a and b, we add the two decomposed fractions using a common denominator. So this gives us, this tells us that, let's see here, 1 over, I'm working, by the way, I'm working with this right here. I'm going to multiply everything by that denominator. This means that 1 equals a times 1 minus 2x plus b times 1 minus x. Okay, so this must be true for all values of x. If x equals 1, then the equation becomes 1 equals, let's see, that's negative a. And that's it. So a equals negative 1. And then when x equals 1 half, we get that That first term here, this, this expression, is 0. And so we get 1 equals 1 minus 1 half is just 1 half. So this is b times 1 half, which means that b equals 2. So a equals negative 1 and b equals 2. This tells us that we can de decompose this fraction right here by replacing this a with negative 1. And that b with 2. Okay, so this completes the partial fraction decomposition. Notice that these two fractions that we just wrote here 
are generating functions that we know. In fact, we should be able to expand each of them. We can write, for example, uh, and I'm going to actually, I'm going to erase this to show a little bit more. I want to keep those partial fractions here on the screen. So I'm going to erase this. There we go. Okay, so we know that negative 1 over 1 minus x is just negative 1 minus x minus x squared minus x cubed minus x to the fourth minus and then so on. And this generates the sequence negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, and so on. Likewise, we can write 2 over 1 minus 2x as a, uh, as a function here, specifically 2 plus 4x plus 8x squared plus 16x cubed plus 32x to the fourth, and so on, which gives the sequence... 2, 4, 8, 16, and so forth. We can give a closed formula for the nth term of each of these sequences. The first is just a n equals negative 1. The second is a n equals, let's see, that's 2 to the n plus 1. The sequence we are interested in is just the sum of these two sequences here. So the solution to the recurrence relation that we want is a n equals 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. We can now add generating functions to our list of methods for solving recurrence relations. So, that's it. Anyways, thanks everyone, and I'll see you in the next lecture.